Hello my students, dear students, I decided to come into this beautiful place and to record a lesson for you. And this is about all about nature. And I just want to tell you wherever you go, you have to um, look at the things very well and always ask yourself questions like what this is, what is it for, how it is... Um, actually benefiting me how i'm helping it like uh, to stay healthy and always like how can i stay in connection with the environment how can i take off them how they can take off me okay so this is a very very natural lagoon i say a lagoon because um yeah is it like a, a the place is a land which has a depression and um, inside it naturally is filled with the rainwater for quite a long time and it has no connection to the rivers or any underground uh, water supply so it's stagnant somehow as you can see I don't see I don't see any kind of the movement or flow of the water here so it's quite a stagnant the thing is that um, you can find, if you listen properly, you will find out uh, that all quiet um, variety of the animals are living inside it. And they're surrounded by these fences, so the animals, especially the crawling ones, they won't actually come into this district, in this area. How um, they have, as you can see those powders there, the are yellow powders, they're all sulfur. The sulfur animals, especially the chromolactic, like the uh, snakes and others, they fear of the smell of the sulfur. And so uh, we have very beautiful flowers here. You look at them. I want to zoom it so we can see. Uh, if I can, I'm not sure that we can zoom this way. So these kind of the uh, uh, actually plants, or this is worth like a grasses. Why they are very important in the nature? Because as you can see, if I pick one of them out, that's what you will see. Okay, oh, it doesn't come properly out. Uh, this type is very especially these days is what's not raining. So. Trying to take one out if I can, couldn't. The, these, these are actually the roots are scattered, it is spread into the soil and it's not deep, it's on the surface. So, how it helps the environment, the nature. It keeps the grain uh, of the soil actually attached and pasted and glued together. So if there is in a case of the rainfall, heavy rainfalls, the, the rain doesn't flow, it doesn't actually wash the soil and its nutrients away um, so and keeps the nutrient inside. So it's very important to have this kind of the coverage and vege vegetation cover uh, on the soil. So these are important. Look at the leaves. The all leaves are very special. I can show to you. Uh, look at this. You can see this leaf is very quite long. And as you see, it has veins, and the veins of the leaves. I can zoom it. Uh -huh. it's, they're all actually parallel to each other. It looks like being originated from some place close to the stem. So these are this type of the actually plants or, or they have um it's a kind of the seed that they have is called as monocot. Monocot are the type of the seeds which has only one cotyledon. It means that it doesn't have you cannot split it up into two uh part easily or by hand or by knife so this is the type of the um, you see the leaf that they have you can also see the behind okay but these kind of plants these are quite different the roots are quite uh, they have a very the main root that goes straight into the soil and keeps it upright 
and they are called as die coat. It means that the seed of them is made of two cotyledons. You can easily split it. So everything here works together and we have these trees, we have this lagoon too. On the lagoon we have a lot of uh, vegetative cover, like the vegetation you can see there. And there are different animals that are like uh, feeding on each other. Like we have frog, we have fish, the all um, dragonflies that I can see, the all lizard, the all uh, some kind sort of the uh, water. Um, I'm not like heron. It's like the uh, some kind of the birds. It's like not a like somehow like a dog. So it shows that they uh, eat for like from whatever is inside. So the food web is connected there all together. So maybe the frog they eat from the uh, insects and the uh, also insects they take uh, some other uh, nutrients from the water. The fishes are taken by the birds and that's go on. We should have as I can hear too. I hope that you enjoy. And the other things that the story, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, but in the soil, when I when I deeply look at the soil, some of the soil are not some of them, and uh, the grains are not attached to each other. And I see the soils are some of them like being piled next to the plants, or like the grains are a bit scattered. It looks a bit awkward. So I, when I go closer and look, I find one another type of the animal. What they are? Let me show you. Avoid getting close to this type of the soils whenever you see. If you see there are holes inside it, it, is, it means that it is the nest of some sort of the animal. Usually there are the nest of the um, ants, some sort of the ants, different types of the ants. This can be not the fire red ants, but it can be the black, big black ants or the other types but the fire red ants also they produce at the same or make their own nest which is somehow similar i will later show you but now let's go and show you what another type of the nest of the ants that i can uh, find here so this one okay these are the black ants and this is the nest that i have found out i hope that you can see well okay so I try to just shake this one so you can see better that what comes out. Okay. Yeah. I think I disturbed them. So they are coming out because they're all now they maybe they uh, like uh, feeling the danger because I just touched it. Nest, yeah. So this is another nest. So we should be very careful when you touch any plant here. Yeah? They should be poisonous or they should be some carrying some sort of the um, pest or any kind of the other animal. So, and I can show you one another type of the nests. Um, Another benefit of this kind of the vegetations, like the grasses and the lawns on the surface of the soil, is that they keep the moisture always available for the trees and for the other plants. So, so they do not let them dry out easily. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now I can show that to you. I try to get closer so I can show it better to you. Do you see that pile of the soil there, the distance? That one is the uh, nest of the a type of the uh, ants. I try to again zoom. Yes, it's quite big. And there are many of them in the different areas of this place. I hope that it can be seen. So I just needed to step out because on the, I may step on the uh, nest of some other, um, you know, or, or the insects maybe, then they will attack me. So I have to be very careful. So, 
So these are all the palm trees and inside them you can find there are different types of the animals again living together and they're feeding from each other and uh, there is a food web, a complete food web or the food uh, chain that in the animals but the thing is that we can easily disturb the food web or the food chain I can see there just by removing one of them or making one of the species uh, more than the others, the population. So we should be very careful not to touch that uh, ecosystem. How we can avoid enter, like changing or disturbing the ecosystem? As I told you, we should be very careful not to introduce any exotic or any kind of um, non-indigenous uh, species to that to the places that are for example uh, there are some sort of the plant that they do not belong to this country or to this region if I bring them here there are two possibilities they may grow very fast they will occupy everything and become dominant so when they become dominant they all they have their own predators they have their own uh, the, uh, prey they have the, 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 the other animals that are attracted become more because they, have, they are feeding from them or they may uh, they may remove some other species from that area because in the competition with them they are much more stronger much more powerful much more successful so that is how we damage the ecosystem. Once one of the species is removed from one uh, area, the other species that are connected or linked to that, or they are benefiting or eating or using that sort of a species um, as a shelter, as a food, as anything, they will be destroyed or also affected. Or if they become more, uh, one species become more, it will bring more new uh, animals or other things in that area. So that they change the food chain, the food web, or the, uh, the composition of the plants and species in that area. I will suggest you when you come to investigate or research, do a research or have a field work into the nature, you bring one gloves with you to bring some protective cloths like uh, uh, socks, which is actually uh, made for these kind of things. So you're not bitten by any insect or any animal or you're also not, if you touch something which is poisonous, you won't get that poison and you won't have any show. We'll, will not show any allergic reaction to the poison or to that allergen so that, those are the things that you have to be careful and let me see this type of the plants are very special they are they are very shy they say so once they are touched they uh, actually gather they collected themselves the, the leaves so you see that if when, once I touch, they close the leaves because the people they say, oh, they are so shy of being touched. You see? Yay, it gets closed. Like, yeah, this one too. Once touched, just a simple touch. Yay. It's a kind of the defense system that they have. They close the leaves. To collect them so is it all the animals they need a way to survive so is a way to see I, I just bring my hand close to them but they close the leaves they do not let me to touch them everything needs to protect itself from the danger or anything else so they closed they have thorns sometimes they have poisons or toxins or they are this kind of the uh, a response to reactions. We sometimes destroy, most of the times, destroy the environment just by changing its uh, type of application that it has. We turn the lands uh, like uh, by changing them into agricultural lands, destroying trees, and um, and also we may like destroy them to make roads like here or to uh, make houses. 
and these are like damaging the thing and also these constructions uh, they have some uh, uh, like a sewage and the um, affluence that they may go inside the water as you can see we have a water there as have, there is a lagoon so they will be washed off into the lagoon or to the rivers or the streams and they finally reach the sea so these pollutants like chemicals you can be have used like the paints like any other like if it is an agricultural area the pesticides that we have used um, they may cause damage to this ecosystem by lowering the pH, by, uh, by introducing the chemicals that may harm the uh, life and threaten the life of the animals and the, um, the plants there. So I get a better view of this area to you. Oh, you can see the sulfur which was spread there for the protection of the area against the intrusion of the uh, animals from that side to this side because here is a residential area so uh, yeah some sort of the animals or the plants they live on the body uh, of the other animals and the plants for example, it can be like a, in a case of some uh, some parasites. If it is parasite, it means that it is damaging. The, it's like a one-way benefit. It means it's not a mutual benefit. They do not coexist. They do not coexist. Uh, they just leave uh, one is feeding on the other and finally it will destroy it. So it's kind of the parasite. But if they live together and they share everything together, they are like benefiting, is a mutual benefit based on them. So they actually coexist together. So you can see one type of this. For example, this plant is attached to the body of this uh, tree. Uh, it's not harming it at all. You see, it doesn't have any root. It has just sent some sort of something, something like a root. Oh, it's not a root. I'm just trying to show you. Um, okay, see if I can. Trying to yes, these ones. These are not roots, but they try this. Uh, uh, they let help this plant to attach itself to the body of this plant, so it can get the nutrients from the vessels of this uh, tree. The nutrients like the sugars, any minerals, water. So sometimes, yeah, they're also coexisting. And they don't they don't uh, harm each other. They both based on the mutual benefit. So it can't be a parasite for this tree. So it's quite harmless for that tree. Another one that is just very common here on the trees I can show you is like a fern. You see the ferns? Yeah. There are ferns that are grow on the body of the other trees. Uh, usually in the humid areas, in the places that all usually receive a lot of rainfall. Yes. So I think for today, uh, just as a um, <laughs> take you out to enjoy maybe and see the uh, nature from very close and just uh, think whenever you reach to any kind of the things on your way and think about it, just do a research. If you do not know anything about it, you can Google, you can investigate. I think for today would be enough for us and I enjoyed walking um, together with you and uh, exploring the area together. I fear that it starts, it starts war uh, raining and once it rains here it pours and you know that so i need to make a beeline to the home back to the home before i get like <laughs> like a shower and then the under the rainfall but still you can see how beautiful this area is how quiet it is and you can see how the ecosystem works uh, the components of the ecosystem works together Oh, they have destroyed some of the plants here, yeah, so to open some space again. Okay, anyway, thank you and have a good day.